everyone, Captain Horn 23 here, and today I'm going to show you how to bring in the Airbus A320 Neo in for an ILS landing in the new Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Before we begin, guys, if you would like to see more Microsoft Flight Simulator content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I upload a video. I also have a Discord server where you can join and find other people to fly with in the new simulator. So let's hop right into an ILS landing. So a little bit of preparation before we do come in for an ILS landing and a little science behind it, I guess. I don't know that much behind ILS landings, but essentially what you need to know is there's what's called a localizer that's shooting straight out from the runway. And it's kind of like a radio signal. And when your aircraft crosses that localizer, it'll do what's called capturing the localizer and the aircraft will automatically line itself up. You know, it'll bank itself and line itself up with the runway so you are able to land. Now a couple of things need to be done before we do come in for an ILS landing. The one thing is we need to program that um, that frequency of the runway into the FMC. So if we head down to the FMC here, <coughs> um, you need to make sure that you do have an ILS approach in. Now if you have went through the FMC or the MCDU and set up a flight plan and you have a flight plan like I have here and you have set up your arrival see I have runway 36 left at KCLT Charlotte um, the radio is automatically going to be programmed so if you go to this page right beside flight plan that says rad nav that's radio navigation if you click that you will see a couple of things here we have VOR1 and the frequency the course and then under that we have ILS and the frequency and that is automatically filled in if you set up your arrival into whichever airport you are heading to so I have ILS 36 left and the frequency is 110.15 and it auto also automatically sets the course the course is very important if the course is not set up then the alignment will be off so if you don't have anything right here, I'm going to show you how to find the frequency. All you have to do is go to your init page, right beside data, and you see this from to, I have KCLT to KCLT. Yours might say, like, I don't know, KATL to KDEN. But if you just want to practice ILS landings, you can set up, um, you can start at an airport like I did, like Charlotte, and all you have to do is type in whichever airport, so for me it's going to be KCLT, and then you just put slash KCLT and then you enter it in just like I did and then this page is going to come up simply hit return alright and then you go to your flight plan and you're going to see from KCLT to KCLT and you'll notice in my navigation page that the frequency is filled in because it was previously but there's no longer an ILS so if we go back to our flight plan and click the little button beside our destination and then hit arrival you want to pick one of these that say ILS beside it. If you continue to scroll down, you'll notice an RNAV, but that is another video. That's a different type of landing. An ILS stands for Instrument Landing System. In other words, the plane will automatically land itself. So, I'm going to pick ILS 36 left, but you can pick whichever runway you want. We don't need a star if you're just practicing, but you will more than likely have a star if you're flying from say Charlotte to Atlanta and then hit that temporary insert and some things are going to populate here and you'll notice the destination now says KCLT 36 left and if we go back to our rad nav page it now fills it in ILS 36 left and the frequency and the course alright so once you make sure your radio navigation is good and it says the runway you are going to land on with the frequency you are good with the MCDU so once you are done with the MCDU and you have the ILS frequency plugged in and the runway that you are landing on, we need to go over a few things in the actual cockpit before we intercept that localizer I was talking about earlier. Now under your altimeter right here, you're going to have two buttons. One says FD, one says LS. The FD should automatically, not automatically, it should already be on 
and all it does is it's a flight director and it's this green crosshair right here in the middle um, this LS button is the ILS info display and if you turn that on which I'm going to you'll notice on right here our Indy it says ILS runway 36 left now yours is probably going to be different because not every runway has um, the same I mean you know there's not always a 36 left depending on the airport you're landing at um, and on your primary flight display you're going to notice these two diamonds came up or maybe the diamonds did not come up maybe it's just these white circles now these diamonds mean different things this one here on the bottom this is your localizer this is what I'm talking about so this diamond is all the way over here it needs to be in the middle if this diamond is in the middle that means our aircraft is aligned with the runway perfectly this diamond over here that has now disappeared is your glide slope and we just saw it was in the middle and that means I was on the glide slope this is you can think of it like um, you know your aircraft descending in order to land on the runway it's the slope at which your plane is gliding down so you can make contact with the runway now I am going to adjust my heading to start making a left turn here because we do need to cross over that localizer and you want to make sure you're far enough out and low enough because if you're too high then you're gonna miss your glide slope and if you're too far out then you're it's gonna be a while before you capture your localizer it's always better to be lower than you think and it's always better to be further out so I'm just gonna keep making this left turn and if I zoom out you see right here we have this is um, the Waylet um, VOR or not VOR um, you know the waypoint that's what I was trying to think of that is going to begin our arrival into the ILS and this is actually lab weather man he's close um, so this is definitely ILS conditions I mean we can't see the ground like, look at that a lot of cloud cover here in Charlotte today <clears throat> So, um, another thing to note is you can kind of think of this like a pattern entry. You like you enter patterns at a 45 degree angle. So that's what I'm going to do. Another thing you do not want to be coming in too fast at all. And if you guys know, when you're under 10,000 feet, you want your landing lights to be on, which mine are on. And I'm going to go ahead and reduce my speed and altitude because like I said you want you always want to be lower than you want or than you think so I'm going to turn on the descent mode by the way you can engage the descent by um, lowering your altitude and pressing the down arrow on this altitude um, knob right here I'm going to go ahead and reduce my flaps as well to help the aircraft slow down but yeah, um, you want to turn on this LS button whenever you are pretty close to the airport like I am right now. And another thing, we're going to have right here in the middle, this LOC that stands for localizer. If you turn this on, then that's going to align the aircraft with the runway, but it will not engage the glide slope. You need to turn on this APPR, which is the approach mode. If you, engaging this engages both the localizer and the glide slope. So I really never use the localizer button. I turn on the APP. And you want to turn on this APPR button whenever both these diamonds are visible and you are on an intercepting course. So like I'm going to start making a left, a hard left turn to get that 45 degree angle for the arrival. And yeah, this is definitely an ILS landing right here. Um, another thing is when you're getting really close, you want to go ahead and turn on your taxi or your um, your takeoff lights and your runway turn off, just like that. We can set our parking brake to medium since it is raining and it's a pretty good sized runway. All right, and now we see I am on. I'm about to be on this intercepting course. I'm at a perpendicular angle. The runway is shooting this way, and we are coming from this way. So I'm going to reduce my speed further, because again, you do not want to be going too fast at all. 
and I'm going to lower my flaps to two. There's some land. It's been a while since I've seen that. And alright, so we've got the localizer diamonds, but we don't yet have the glide slope diamond. That's okay. It should appear once we get closer. And the localizer has just flipped over to this side, which is perfectly fine as well. You also want to make sure your speed brake is armed, and it's... You see I can move it up and down. When it's up and this white strip is showing, that means it is armed. So you're good there. The spoilers will deploy on landing. Alright, and I am definitely low enough now. I'm going to eventually start my turn, my 45 degree turn, into the runway. So we can capture that localizer real nice. Because think about it, if you were coming this way, then you're not going to make that localizer capture. Your plane, it would just, it'd have to bank like a ridiculous amount. And it, it just would not work at all. So, this is why we use ILS approaches. I don't even know where the runway is right now because of the cloud cover. <laughs> Alright, we're, I'm going to bank a little bit further. And guys, this is pretty much practice. This is a lot of practice and just getting used to because it, it can be pretty precise. I'm going to continue this 45 degree angle bank here. We are now 2,000 feet above the earth and holding. We got altitude on. And now both my diamonds have disappeared. That is probably because um, I'm too far away from the airport right now. So I'm just going to wait until I get a little closer. But we can see my route right here. This is going straight into the runway. And Charlotte is actually a little further up. All right, there we go. My diamonds have just reappeared because I did get close enough. And we have this runway 36 left. It has reappeared. Diamonds. And your frequency is actually shown down here in the bottom left of your primary flight display. Now, I'm going to continue at this angle. <clears throat> and when I cross about right here where it intersects, then this diamond is going to start moving over to the left. And that's your localizer. And when you see these diamonds and you're on this intercepting course, you can go ahead and engage, approach. Then when you engage that, the aircraft is going to start banking just like that to get in line with this runway. And you really don't even have to touch anything else. So see, it's trying to find this localizer. It's banking back to the right. And there's our glide slope diamond. It has just appeared. And eventually, this diamond right here is going to start moving. And my aircraft has to catch up to it. Alright, so we're on an intercepting course with the localizer. This diamond is going to start moving any second now. I'm going to reduce the... Uh, Yep, there it goes. You see it's now moving over towards this yellow line and the aircraft is banking to get in line with the localizer. So it's going to reach this yellow line right here and it will stay right here on the yellow line. Now this glide slope diamond is so far up because I am actually under the glide slope. So I've got to get even closer to the airport before it um, starts descending. So we now see that this diamond is now pretty much right in the middle. And that means I am perfectly in line with the runway, even though we can't see anything right now. So at this point, once you're on the localizer, you can go ahead and drop the gear. And we can lower our flaps further. 
because we are now on final thanks to the localizer there we go three green on the gear we can lower our flaps one more notch and one more thing if you want the aircraft to automatically land itself then you'll probably notice that we have two autopilots right here AP1 and AP2 once you're on the localizer you can actually engage this autopilot too and what this does is it automatically flares the aircraft for landing and it'll even um, keep itself on the runway and lower your throttles for you now you do still have to lower your throttles all the way down and that's the famous you know um, 20 10 retard retard that retard is telling you to lower your throttles all the way down because you're so close to the ground so um, yeah we need to get a little closer before we engage the autopilot too once we're on the glide slope and the localizer and this glide slope diamond right here on the top is going to start going down towards this yellow line here very soon So to go over the landing checklist of an uh, Airbus, it's actually pretty simple. For an ILS, you want to make sure this ILS frequency is plugged in right here. Your LS button is on, your flight director should already be on. Under 10,000 feet, we obviously want our landing lights to be on, and our runway turnoff lights, and our takeoff lights on. We want our auto brake right here set to medium. Um, you can set it to low if it's not raining or anything like that. And then flaps full, speed brake armed. And that's pretty much the landing checklist. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot more in real life. But for the current state of Microsoft Flight Sim Letter 2020, this is the checklist. And notice we literally still can't even see the runways. Unless it's these flashing lights here. I think these are other aircraft. And this glide slope diamond will be descending here shortly. And we see we're coming up on the runway. So we can go ahead and lower our speed further. Charlotte Tower, Blue Streak 56748 miles south inbound ILS runway 36 center approach. The um the vertical landing speed Blue of an Airbus A320 is around 139 you know it, de it definitely depends on the weight of the aircraft and the conditions I usually leave it at 140 just to be safe because if a huge gust of wind hits you then you will end up stalling all right and we are nearing the airport and I don't know if you guys can tell but in Charlotte this is runway 36 center the localizer has this exact 36, um, I'm sorry, this is 36 left. 36 center is right here, and 36 right is right there. <clears throat> that glide slope diamond is going to be moving any second now. We actually did come in a little low, but like I said, you would much rather be a lot lower than you need. Also, by the way, this little altitude right here is your feet AGL, above ground level. There we go. Um, this glide slope is now moving down. This diamond is starting to head downwards. And when, once it crosses this yellow line, the aircraft is going to automatically descend. And this little Alt and G slash S is going to change to just glide slope. And we still can't see the runway. So, yep, that's that. All right, here goes the diamond. It is crossing. There we go. It just changed to GS. And we are now pointing our nose down. And we are on the glide slope. So that's what I meant. That we obviously couldn't hold it 2,000 feet there. We had to eventually start angling downwards. 
forward to the ground. Alright, and now we can engage autopilot 2. Or, um, I wonder if that's a bug. Usually you can, or I wonder if it's even simulated. Typically in an Airbus, you can engage autopilot um, 2 and it'll land itself. But there's the runway now. And we're actually above the glide slope. So the localizer captured and the glide slope captured. But yeah, typically you can engage this autopilot too. I don't know why it's not. And there it is coming down on the runway. 500. There's our 500 call out. Wow, I can barely see anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why autopilot 2 is not working. But um, it usually will land the aircraft. And wow, my nose is pitched up quite a bit. Alright, so here we go. And at this point, since autopilot 2 isn't going to work, we can disengage the autopilot. There's our retard call out. And touchdown. And our auto brakes are going to take effect. And our spoiler shift came out, which they did. And I don't have a key binding for reversing my engines just yet. I need to get that. And there we go. We can now manually brake. And our spoiler should have came up. I mean, back down. And there you have it, guys. So that is an ILS approach. Um, I'm not sure if somebody would like to correct me in the comments. Um, I don't think the auto land is simulated currently. Because typically this both this autopilot one and autopilot two would be highlighted and it'd come up with a cat three right here. But yep, so guys, after you land, of course you want to stop right here and get your landing lights off and put your taxi light on. And we can go ahead and raise our flaps all the way up. And generally you would start the APU. And that is an ILS landing, and he had to go around. <laughs> but, yep, guys, so that's an ILS landing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned how to do an ILS landing. If you are having trouble, don't forget that I do have that Discord in the description below. And keep in mind that the simulator does have quite a few bugs that Microsoft needs to work out. But for the most part, it worked for me right there. Again, I don't know if it simulated the auto land. I don't know if it simulated at all. But um, yeah, anyway, you can get on the localizer and the glide slope like I just showed. And I will see. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I will see you guys on the next video.